A very warm welcome back to our London studio here. Welcome, welcome. in. It is so good to welcome. have you with us. Oh. Kate, Thierry, Jamie and Michael. What a Champions League night that what one was. Amazing. Like, we enjoyed wow. it. Thierry, how are you feeling? I called it. You called it. <laughs> What's the call? I don't know why you guys are surprised still with Madrid. I've seen that first half. I've seen the second half. I've seen that result before times and times again. I'm surprised that you're surprised. I don't... Don't get it. You've still seen pretty it. cool when movie. you do see it happen, though, isn't it? No, I know, but not, not surprised. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't know. I was expecting it, in all fairness. Um, I, I would have to say something, and it happens to, to any young manager. I've been in that position. He went into a back five too early. You just don't go into a back five that early against a team like that when you're 2 nil up. You defended well in the back four, uh, Shane and Dortmund. Why suddenly you cannot defend in the back four? Why are you allowing them to... Stay in your Was in that your them half. Losing, their, losing their bottle to some extent? I don't know. I don't know because I, I, I can assure you when you're behind that line and you, you, when I'm here, it's clear to see that you shouldn't do that. When you are on the other side sitting on the bench and you're 2 nil up, at times you, you, instead of, of staying calm, you play the moment. So they had one or two chances early doors that were not really that clear and then he went into a back five. And I'm like, you were controlling the game into a back four. Yeah, obviously, they're going to send body, body in. I just think he went too early into a back, uh, into a back five. And in a team like that, you allow them to stay uh, around your box. They're going to punish you. Uh, and they did. I think what Thierry said there about it being a young coach, I, I always, I, it's something that stuck in my mind from the final. And we know Bruce Dortmund dominated the final. Courtois made saves early on. And the manager of Real Madrid, Carlo Ancelotti's interview, after the game, after he won the Champions League, was about a half time. Did he need to change something? And he said, no, he just needed to remain calm. Mm. And I just think you think of the experience of that man on the bench compared to the Borussia Dortmund uh, manager. He was obviously new to it, it's not a criticism. You, you know, sometimes you make a decision, sometimes you make a substitution, and it works. But when you're talking about making a decision, Terry's he's spoken about being on the touch and it feels different, maybe you feel pressured. You just think of the experience that man's got. There wasn't a change, they're getting beat two and a half times. There wasn't a change at half time, was there? Mm -mm. You know, from Real Madrid. So normally, how many managers would change something at half time if you're two 0 down? He never panics. He remains calm, and he got his just rewards. Yeah. So they're two 0 up at that point, which is obviously is a fantastic position to be in in Madrid. You've talked about the fact that you think it was a mistake to to shift to that defensive um, kind of positioning for Dortmund in the second half. What do you think they should have done in the second half? How should they just have carried on as they were? Stay calm. It's going to happen. Same. It's Real Madrid. They play at home. They're going to have chances, but you you control the game. Uh, playing in the back four. I just think that sometimes playing in the back five, you allow people to dominate the game inside. Uh, and, and it's even more difficult to, to come out, especially at the end, em Emre Chan came on as a wing back on the right. How are you going to defend on Vinicius? Emre Chan, very difficult, and we saw it on the last goal. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask you to stay calm. You, you've played the Bar, both of you. How easy is it to stay calm? Because no, it's, it's, it's with the players to... that Real Madrid have, and I feel like it's... I don't want to say it's disrespectful, but like just to stay calm at the Bernabeu they, they, in one of the biggest games of their season with young players, surely you that have, just comes with experience, maybe? You have some, even experience, it, it doesn't really matter. When it, when it, it creeps on, in you or on you, and, and Jimmy will know that, you have stadiums that will make you lose your mind on a night in a Champions League. Liverpool scores, it's 2 0 up, Liverpool score. Night, Champions League night, you, you start to stutter. You know, you play at Madrid, you, you know the place, you know how it is, so you start to suffer. That's when you need to stay calm. One opportunity, one, 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 one v one, the goalkeeper saves it. Stay calm. You don't need to change the whole tactic of what you did for the game. Because when they smell blood, Liverpool on the night in the Champions League, uh, Barca, Real Madrid, or whoever, you can name the big clubs in Europe, you let them smell blood, it's over. Luca, congratulations. Comeback Kings have come back yet again. People talk about it being in the DNA of this club, but can you just explain what happened this evening? <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, two opposite half for us. Uh, first one, we, we, we were really bad to say like this, to be honest, because we, we let uh, Borussia play too easy. We, we were far from them. We, we were not aggressive. And uh, that was the some of, of the first half, but second half we, we talk and we said that we need to be more aggressive, press more higher on the pitch and uh, to score first goal and then get fine, fans behind us. 
uh, like it always happened at Bernabeu and then we changed the game completely and uh, this is the way how we need to play and how this team should play because we have so much quality in the team it's just uh, i think it's just mentally you just need to go out uh, go for the game like we did in second half and this is what happens and especially in this competition which is uh, really special for us why do you think Borussia Dortmund were able to find those spaces in the first half because it almost looked like it was easy for them yeah we make them uh, we make them game easy for them because we dropped too too deep in our half we didn't press we let them play easy and uh, like this it's it's really difficult and uh, as soon as we change in second half it was uh, more difficult for them because they didn't have that much time on the ball and uh, we we steal the ball more higher up the pitch and uh, we create many chances what was the message from um uh, Mr. <laughs> Carlo Ancelotti at half time. Yeah, he, he just said that we that we need to change, forget about first half, and that we need to, like I told you before, be more aggressive, uh, press press high up the pitch, and to to move more without the ball, and that's what we did. Speaking about your role in this Real Madrid team this season, I know everyone talks about your age, you may not want me to bring it up. <laughs> Did you expect to have such a big role as you are since the start of the season? Yeah, what to tell you, I always said uh, the team is the most important. I'm here always to help. Uh, yeah, I, I feel good physically and mentally and uh, when I'm like this, I know what I, what I can give to the team. And uh, yes, whenever you, when I'm here, I expect to to play always. But on the end, it's down to Mister to decide how much use me. I I always wants to play because I really feel good, and uh, I don't like when they <laughs> when people are reminding me about the age because it's the most important what you give, how you feel on the pitch. And uh, in from my personal point of view, I feel really really good and uh, like I said on the end is down to to mister how much he wants to use me but so far I'm I'm happy it looks like he might be giving you a few more minutes after tonight and just <laughs> finally within a week one of the biggest nights in world football is happening the Ballon d'Or you of course have won that illustrious prize a couple of your teammates are up for nomination is there anyone that you're thinking maybe getting that that prize uh, let's see let's see because we have a couple of players that could that could win it. After uh, today, Vinny Junior, do you think he's closer to it? Yeah, definitely. But not just for tonight, but uh, all season he was outstanding, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to see it, uh, who will win it. But I think overall, when you see how he played last season and what he is doing this season, and especially after tonight, I think he he deserves it. Thank you very much, Luca. Congratulations on thank the you, win. Thank you, thank you. Do we agree? Vinny Jr. for the Ballon d'Or? Uh, let's not do clickbait here, because, I mean, we, we've all said... What? I'm not asking a clickbait no, question. No, no, I'm, ask I'm you, not... ask you a question and answer. Ro Rodri would still get my vote from okay. last, last season's performance. OK. Jamie? Uh, I'd go for, for Vinny Jr. You know, they won the Champions League, which is, is, is the biggest thing in club uh, football. I mean... <laughs> It's difficult for Roger because of the position he plays. It's just very few players probably win it in that position, mm -hmm. whether you're a defender or a holding midfield player. Now, Roger, yes, of course, he, he can win it. Maybe he should win it, but those type of... It's always the attacking players. That's why you get, the, get paid the big bucks. They're the ones who go for the big transfer fees. They're the ones who excite people, get people off the seats, as he's done tonight. So, uh, yeah, I don't think you can knock him if he wins that. Who would have got your vote? Uh, Rodri, because I wanted uh, the, the, the Xavi and the, the Iniesta when they were performing. People forget about the midfielders and what they do and, and they're the heart of the team and he was the heart of the of Man City. I know he didn't win the Champions League, but he won the Euro. Uh, Vinicius Junior didn't perform at the Copa America. But is he a worthy winner? Yes, he's out, outstanding. I keep on saying, if we, I think for me right now, as a f forward, he's the best in the world. Yeah. So he deserves it. Stole your social cliff, hasn't he? <laughs> Real Madrid thought they'd bought the best player in the world when they already had the best player in the world. Enjoy your Ballon d'Or, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward. What are <laughs>
Why, why do you guys could like humor him though? Why yeah, do you give like him you the close up? What are you doing? Or something. <laughs> so like, weird. Listen, that's gonna go viral. It's not. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not. It's not even going out. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Can do it again with a bit more pizzazz, please. <laughs> oh, no, we've got to go. We've got to go.